God justifies language four. Now, when he communicated language to Adam and Eve, he communicated the ideas and the concept behind what the words meant. Now, the, the Rainbow Torah from Genesis 1, 1 to 11, 9, from creation to the Tower of Babel, has a dictionary associated with it. There's no actual recorded historical biblical dictionary from the time of early, early society, the beginnings of things. But we've kept alive in the traditions of Satan of the Bible and the original languages, various interpretations and written documents, which ultimately form more recent dictionaries, biblical dictionaries of the words. So God's justified the biblical text, generally, as we understand in the tradition of Karite faith. That this is a communication from God. This is his official communication to mankind, the scriptures. So we, we, we understand that God has justified the scriptures, scriptural text as a communication device to mankind. And it behooves us, it, 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 it's important for us to remember that there's a living tradition of the, of the words. There's a living tradition of our understanding of the words, which goes with a the text. They've been translated into different tongues. And we've got, gone for, for, for the Hebrew Bible, from Hebrew into English, older English languages, old English and more recent English, modern English. So there's a, there's a, tr there's a translation or transliteration, whatever the word is, from the, the original Hebrew of the, the, the oldest biblical language we have, Hebrew, into English. So the, that carries with it the, the transferring of the, the definitions of those words, which are associated in the community of the Hebrew language, which has gone on into the English language, which has its own words and meanings. So all that, all of that adds up to the fact that God communicated ideas, the knowledge of what the words meant to Adam, so he gave definitions. He must have given explanation to what the words meant, or Adam and Eve wouldn't have known what the words meant. He must have defined the words, given some sort of instruction in some way for what the words actually meant, what they, what they were about, what their definition was, what their meaning was. So there's a natural dictionary associated with the biblical text. There's a natural meaning which com communicated from the beginning. So it's important to have biblical dictionaries. And in the sense that God has generally justified that concept in language dictionaries by the fact that the words were given meaning in the beginning. So God justifies language and he got, justifies the concepts flowing from that, from what he's likely have done to start with, of, of dictionaries or sort of encyclopedic things, things which explain the Bible, Bible dictionaries, the companion books which explain the Bible's words and the concepts and the ideas and culture and history. You certainly can study the Bible in isolation, as it were, because it gives enough information on people out in the world know how society works, and the Bible's society of the civilization, the biblical text, is not that not that different to our our civilization. We've got a lot more complex elements, but the the basic works are still the same, somewhat. So you can actually study the Bible in isolation without necessarily going to Bible dictionaries. But that's where a greater clarification often comes and greater understanding. And it's important that we, we keep the definitions alive and continue to study our, our languages in human society and the words and the meanings, which we automatically do by the looks of it anyway, for the most part. But Bible dictionaries are, are, are an extension of the language of a text itself. And I think just as much as God justifies the biblical text, he justifies the original interpretation of the words, of the meanings of the words, and how that is communicated in the associated paraphernalia associated with the biblical text. That's justified to me just as much.